Hello? Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're checking out VIP Vision, which is the Hui based intercom systems. So here we have the outdoor station. This one has a numpad, so if you do get locked out, you can always just type in the magical code. It also has a card reader, RFID, so you can um, scan some fobs in. That is the monitor, and it also has some lights. So this is a very advanced unit. The back here, that is your PoE connection. And there is also a 12 pin and an eight pin. Inside, you also get, this is the, the manual to tell you where the wires will go. Next up, we'll check out the surface mount that I got for the device. And this one is simply, <laughs> it costs, costs quite a bit, but it's simply just a frame so you can fit your device on. Matches the same color, makes it look nice and flush. This is the monitor. I like this monitor. It says VIP, makes it look nice and fancy as if you are an important person. And the back here, there is RJ45, so you can plug your POE directly in. And then you also get a mounting bracket and wall plugs as well. So what you'll need is either 12 volts or a POE switch. This is a Netgear unmanaged switch, but it's a monster POE switch. It has POE max because I got this one because I wanted to power super, super awesome devices for the future. But for now, I'll use this to power these two units. Please select language and click OK. So that's English. OK. And I want to wire up a villa. Password. Now this email is used to reset password. So this is the local one for the monitor. And that one's got an IP address of 1.155 and the VTO it's already got an IP address of 1.108, it's uninitialized. So this guy needs to be initialized. So the default password is the same as the first configuration. So I'm just gonna type in a password. So we've initialized the VTO, so one key config, and it's now communicating with the VTO, the outdoor unit, the new IP address, and it will go ahead and reconnect with each other. So there you go, looks like we're fully set up. So I click on the monitor, main VTO, and that's me right there. Hello, hello, hello. The door is unlocked. You get an unlock button. It's for the electric strike. You can take pictures, record video, find out what's going on, and go back. And this guy can make a phone call. That's it, pretty easy. Settings, uh, the default password here is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now the first thing you should do is change that password. So to do that, you go into general and use a password and you can put yourself a new password there. Reason why you wanna change that password is that it is also the default unlock code. So over on the intercom here, if you type in hash, one, two, Now next up, I've actually changed the name of my monitor. I've changed it to outside and I've changed the name of my location to home. And to do this, you'll need to both access it on this device and as well as a computer to access these IP addresses. So if you go into setting, long press it for six seconds, you get to type in now your admin password. And here it tells you the IP address of this unit and also the name of the VTH, which is this unit here. So I've changed my room name to home. It's important to remember your use of lowercase and capitalization. So I recommend just using capitals because it makes it capitals anyway. And it gets confused if you try using lowercase letters and uppercase letters. So I've got it here now called home. And my VTO, you can see that this is my IP address for it. 192.168.1. And I've named it outside. Now, that will allow me when I go into monitor here, I'll be outside, and if I get a call, it says call from outside. So I think that's pretty cool. But in order to get the outdoor unit to successfully call this unit, now that's called home, you need to log into the menu. So I'm gonna jump into the IP address and I'm presented with the screen. So I type in my username, which is admin, and there's a couple of things to remember. The first time you're logging in, you're gonna be logging in via HTTP, which means anyone on the local network can sniff and find out your password. So maybe use 
an unsafe password to start off with and then after you enable HTTPS, the secure method, that's when you put in the good password. So I'll show you how to enable HTTPS and some cool advanced features. So first up in network setting over here, you want to go in and take that HTTPS port, you want to make sure it's enabled. Once you save that on the bottom right here, it's going to go ahead and restart the intercom. It's going to take about a minute. You're going to hear the sirens and then you'll know it's up and ready. Then you can access it using HTTPS. It sometimes gives me a warning message saying you can't access it via HTTPS. So you can just type in this is unsafe and it will allow you to access this menu. I've already typed that in. That's why I haven't been prompted. But if you get prompted with a connection error message, just type in this is unsafe, no spaces or lowercase, and it will just appear. So now that I'm accessing it using HTTPS, it's encrypted. So it means if anyone else is on your network is sniffing, packet sniffing, they can't easily decrypt your password. So I'm on this menu setting here. I want to go into local settings and look at that. It says Villa call number. I've changed that here from 9901 hash zero, which was the name of my VTH. I've changed it to home, but I've also gone into household setting, room number management, and I've created a new room called home. So you click add, type in home, all capitals, all capitals. So it reflects the same capitalization that you used on your intercom. And uh, the default password, one, two, three, four, five, six. You just type in the password that you've set on the VTO unit and then hit save. And now you've got the room number called home and in local settings, you've got it calling home. So now when you press the call button, it's going to know to call home rather than 9901 hash zero. Of course, you can ignore those settings and leave it alone. I'm just trying to make it look pretty. The second thing you can do to make it look pretty is go over into video and audio. Now, by default, the video format is WVGA, which is kind of mid range resolution and it gives you up to two megabits of recording capacity. However, you can easily switch up to 720p, high quality video, and you can make your bit rate from two megabits to all the way up to six megabits a second. But you can also, if you have any IP monitoring software, for example, this is an app for free on the App Store, the Mac App Store, it's called IP Camera Viewer. You can connect up your intercom to this application. Another thing you should change is in local settings. You want to go into system and then this is your system time. So set your time zone and check if you're on daylight savings or not. I'm not and my time zone is plus 10 and then just click sync PC and that will just copy your time that's current on your computer straight to the intercom. So next up, I'm going to show you another cool feature of this intercom and that is RFID. So I'm going to go into room home and I'm going to issue a card and I've got 120 seconds to confirm that card. So now I have a card number, hit save and confirm send card. That card has been accessed and I'll hit save. So now when I use my ID, it should unlock the door. And if I go ahead and try an incorrect ID card, error, the correct one. The door is unlocked. I've got a delivery of some silicon. When I unlock, I'm using this switch. 